Thank you. Uh, and thank you, my lords. I rise to speak physically in the chamber for the first time since March, so I hope you'll forgive me if I'm feeling a little rusty. Um, and the reason why I'm here is, of course, although for many procedures in your Lordship's House uh, we refer to people taking part remotely and those in the chamber being treated equally, that's not unfortunately the case with ping pong, uh, and that's why I feel like I've uh, had the need to be here. And I do, in reflecting on that, want to just very briefly comment on the earlier discussion about procedures in your Lordship's House, because I would like to respectfully disagree with the many people who were um, saying that they want to go back to as things were before as soon as possible, because I think the remote participation that enables people who, for all kinds of reasons, whether it be disability, whether it be caring responsibilities, whether it be all kinds of reasons, may not be able to be in the chamber, that's something I believe that we should keep. And of course, remote voting allows a wider democracy uh, as much as we can, which would surely be a good thing. But I rise to speak in favour of Amendment B1 in the name of the Noble Lord Stevenson of Balmacara. And I'm going to particularly focus on the environment side of this and quote Alok Sharma, uh, our, the government's chair of the um, COP26 talks, speaking yesterday at the Climate Ambition Summit pointing out that 45 leaders had announced new 2030 climate uh, TAG plans, 24 had committed to net zero, and 20 had talked about the strengthening adaptation. But we're still not on track for 1.5 degrees. And you know, we're seeing the revival as we start to really gear up for COP26 of 1.5 to stay alive. And we have a long way to go. And if we look at the situation of the nations of the UK, there's no doubt that leadership has very often, sadly, not come from Westminster, but leadership on everything from home energy efficiency to plastic bag taxes to bottle deposit schemes, all kinds of environmental issues. Leadership has come from the nations of the other nations of the UK than England. Uh, and so if we don't allow that to happen, we're cutting off the opportunity of progressing faster. And I would suggest that's not in line with the government's intentions. Now, I note also that um, uh, I was speaking at the weekend uh, at an event that was focusing on the Amazon and the beauty of the diversity of the Amazon. And there is an innate strength in diversity, in difference, in different places, trying different things, trying different approaches. And if you shut that off, as if we don't have a disamendment or something very like it, we do, uh, then we're actually you know, hampering the efforts the government, I'm pleased to say, says are they so keen on succeeding on, on the environment. And finally, I want to pick up um, words from the noble lady Baroness Hayter of Kentish Town in the uh, first group of amendments here. He was talking about the, the take back control issue. And I often find myself uh, participating remotely or in the chamber, uh, shaking my head as speakers say, oh, we're all supporters of, of the union here. But I, you know, I believe in Subsidiarity, I believe in decision making being made locally. Uh, but I'm going to offer some free advice for those who want to keep um, the existing arrangements that squeezing people tighter, taking away independence, taking away rights given, is not a way for that to continue. Now, we are in your Lordship's house awaiting, um, we've been awaiting for quite some time, the very important domestic abuse bill, which really brings in the idea of coercive control into our law. And if we attempt to coerce people, uh, take away their independence, the rights they already have, that is going to make them seek more independence, I would suggest to your Lordships. So I believe that B1, I regret the fact that it's actually um, diminished from e earlier versions, uh, similar versions of this amendment. Uh, I regret the loss of animal welfare, the loss of cu cultural expression, but I would say to your Lordship's House, it is crucial that we keep the environmental standards and protection. And as Lord Stevenson of Balmacara said, how in the middle of a pandemic could we not keep that opportunity for every government in the United Kingdom to protect their peoples as they best can their public health?